Welcome to the Beyond the Basics guide for the Nikon D610. This is a great camera that will capture amazing images as well as HD video. We hope you'll enjoy learning more about it with this instructional guide. This guide is meant to be a study tool to be used in connection with and not a replacement of your camera's owner's manual. You can watch it entirely in one sitting or by chapter. Feel free to navigate to any specific chapter you wish to view at any time during the video. Please note that this guide does not cover many of the more basic features and functions of the D610, as those topics are discussed at length in our original guide. Rather, this guide will help you move forward with your knowledge of your camera to help you take the best pictures possible. can be customized is the function button. You can customize the button itself as well as the way the button operates in conjunction with the command dials. First, let's look at the options for customizing the role played by the function button. You can choose from almost 20 different options. First, you can choose preview. When this option is selected, pressing and holding the function button will allow you to preview the depth of field with your current aperture setting. The next option is FV Lock, which will allow you to press the function button to lock the flash value for the built-in and compatible external flash units. If you select this option, you can press the function button once to lock the flash output and then press the button again to release the flash value lock. The next option is the AEAF Lock. When selected, the AEAF Lock setting will allow you to press and hold the function button to lock the exposure and focus until the shutter button is pressed completely. AE lock only will allow you to press and hold the function button to lock just the exposure setting. Next, there is AE lock hold. With this setting, the exposure will be locked when the function button is pressed, and it will remain locked until the function button is pressed again. The AF lock only option will set the function button to lock the focus while the button is held down. Next, there is the AF on setting. When AF on is selected, pressing and holding the function button will activate the camera's autofocus, just like pressing the shutter button halfway. The flash off option will allow you to press and hold the function button to temporarily disable the flash. The next option is bracketing burst. This is a useful option if you use the camera's bracketing feature often. Normally with the D600, you must have the camera set to one of the continuous drive modes if you want the camera to take pictures continuously while the shutter button is held down. With the bracketing burst option, you can take a continuous series of bracketed shots with the camera in the single frame or quiet release modes. You'll simply need to press and hold the function button while you're pressing the shutter button and the camera will continuously take the specified number of bracketed shots. The next option is active delighting, which will allow you to press and hold the function button while rotating the main or sub command dials to select the active delighting setting. Next, there is plus NEF RAW. You can use this option if you're shooting in JPEG only and you'd like to shoot just a few RAW images. Simply press the function button and then take the picture as you normally would. After the picture has been taken, the camera will resume using the JPEG only setting. 
If you want to take a series of plus raw images, keep the shutter button pressed halfway between shots. Note that when the camera is shooting a plus raw image, raw will be displayed on the control panel. The next three options, matrix metering, center weighted metering, and spot metering, will activate the respective metering mode while the function button is pressed. The next option is framing grid, which will allow you to press and hold the function button while rotating the main command dial to display a framing grid in the viewfinder. The next option is choose image area, which will allow you to select either the FX or DX image area by pressing and holding the function button while rotating the main command dial. The next option for customizing the function button is Viewfinder Virtual Horizon. With this option, you can view a virtual horizon display in the viewfinder, which will help you ensure that the camera is level side to side and in the forward backward positions. To return to the regular viewfinder display, simply press the function button again. The next option, My Menu, will allow you to press the function button to instantly access the camera's My Menu. The next option is Access Top Item in My Menu, which will allow you to instantly access the top menu item in the camera's My Menu. Next, there is One Step Speed Aperture. By default, your camera is set to use one-third steps for changing exposure. With the One Step Speed Aperture setting, you can press and hold the function button while rotating either of the command dials to change the aperture or shutter speed by one full exposure step. Next, there is the Choose Non-CPU Lens Number option. With this option, you can use the function button in conjunction with the command dials to set a lens number for a non-CPU lens. The next option for customizing the function button is Playback. When selected, the Playback option will allow you to enter the camera's playback mode by pressing the function button. This is useful for times when it may be difficult to access the playback button with your left hand. The final option for customizing the function button is None. When this option is selected, pressing the function button will have no effect. In addition to the function button, you can also customize the role of the preview button. Each of the functions that can be assigned to the function button can also be assigned to the preview button, including preview, FV lock, AEAF lock, AE lock only, AE lock hold, AF lock only, AF on, flash off, bracketing burst, active delighting, plus raw, matrix metering, center weighted metering, spot metering, framing grid, choose image area, viewfinder virtual horizon, my menu, access top item in my menu, one step speed aperture, choose non-CPU lens number, playback, and none. You can also customize the role of the AEL-AFL button. The options for the AEL-AFL button include AEAF lock, AE lock only, AE lock hold, AF lock only, AF on, and FV lock. Each of these options function in the same way as they do when they're used with the function button. The next controls that you can customize are the command dials. You can select one of four different options. The first option is reverse rotation, which will allow you to reverse the direction that you rotate the command dials when you're making changes to the exposure compensation and shutter speed aperture settings. To use this option, select the setting or settings you'd like and then scroll to Done and select OK. The next option for customizing the command dials is Change Main Sub. With this option, you can reverse the roles of the main and sub command dials. If off is selected, the default settings of main command dial, shutter speed and sub command dial, aperture will be used. If on is selected, the roles of the command dials will be reversed and the main command dial will control the aperture and the sub command dial will control the shutter speed. The other option, on mode A, is for when you want the roles of the command dial to be reversed only when the camera is in certain shooting modes. If this option is selected, the main command dial will be used to set the aperture in aperture priority mode only. The next option is aperture setting, which allows you to select how you'd like to be able to adjust the aperture setting. 
If subcommand dial is selected, the aperture can be selected only using the subcommand dial. If aperture ring is selected, you can select the aperture only with the aperture ring that is available on specific lenses. If your lens does not have an aperture ring, aperture will be adjusted with the sub-command dial regardless of the option that is selected. The final option for customizing the command dials is menus and playback. There are three options for this setting. First, you can select off, which will mean that the command dials will have no effect on accessing the menus and playback. If either of the other two options, on or on image review excluded, are selected, the command dials can be used to navigate through the images in playback and to navigate the menu system. If you want to prevent the command dials from scrolling through images during image review, you'll want to select on image review excluded. The next option to customize is Release button to use dial, where you can select either yes or no. This option applies the Exposure Compensation button, Flash Compensation button, the Bracket button, the ISO button, the Quality button, the White Balance button, and the AF Mode button. If you select yes, you can press and release the button, then rotate the main or sub-command dial to make changes. If you select no, which is the default option, you will need to press and hold the button while you're rotating the command dials to make adjustments. The next option that you can customize on the D600 is Slot Empty Release Lock. With this option, you can choose what you would like the camera to do when there is no memory card inserted. If you choose Enable Release, you will be able to press the shutter button to release the shutter and take a picture even if there is no memory card in the camera. If you select Release Locked, the camera will disable the shutter button if a memory card is not inserted in the camera. The next option that can be customized is Reverse Indicators. With this option, you can reverse the direction of the exposure indicators in the control panel, viewfinder, and information display. The last option for customizing your D610 in still shooting modes is Assign MBD14 AF On. This setting will allow you to select the function of the AF On button that is on the optional battery pack for this camera. Many of the options that you can choose are the same as the options that are available for the camera's function button. Although it's reasonably easy and efficient to use the camera's menu system to format the memory card, there is an even faster way to do this. Press and hold the delete button and the metering mode button at the same time. An FOR, the number of shots remaining, and the card slot will flash on the control panel. To change the card that will be formatted, rotate the main command dial. Press both buttons a second time to confirm that you'd like to format the card. Another handy feature is the ability to use the quality and exposure compensation buttons to perform a two-button reset. This reset will restore the camera to default settings. Simply press and hold these two buttons at the same time for more than two seconds. The top LCD panel will blink. Bracketing is a technique that allows photographers to take several versions of the same photo, but with different settings. When exposure is bracketed using three images, one of the photos will be properly exposed, one will be slightly overexposed, and one will be slightly underexposed. Then you'll have the ability to choose the best image of the three, or use photo editing software to combine the three shots giving the image a broad range of highlights and shadows that are all properly exposed. This technique is often called HDR, or High Dynamic Range. Professional photographers have used bracketing since the days of film to ensure good exposure on important shots. With digital cameras today, bracketing options are available not only for exposure, but for flash level, white balance, and with the D610, even active delighting.
Let's first look at how to configure the camera for exposure bracketing. The first thing that you'll need to do is set the release mode. When you're using one of the continuous release modes, you'll press and hold the shutter button to record the number of frames you'd like. In the self-timer release mode, you can set the number of shots to be taken each time the shutter button is pressed. To do this, navigate to the custom settings menu and select timers AE lock. Then select self-timer. Here you can set the number of shots to be taken each time the shutter button is pressed. For the other release modes, one shot will be taken each time the shutter button is pressed. We'll choose the continuous low speed release mode. To adjust the number of frames per second in continuous low speed release mode, navigate to the custom settings menu, then shooting display. Scroll to D5, CL mode shooting speed, and select the number of frames per second. The next step to configure the camera for exposure bracketing is to select what type of bracketing you'd like from the menu system. To do this, navigate to the custom settings menu and choose E, bracketing and flash. Then select E6, auto bracketing set. From here, you can choose from AE or auto exposure and flash, AE only, flash only, white balance, and active delighting. We'll choose AE only. Now we can press and hold the bracketing button while rotating the sub-command dial to select bracketing increment or the amount of variation we'd like to see in each of the shots. Variations are set in increments between 0.3 and 3. The larger the number, the more variation in exposure there will be. If you select a smaller increment like 0.3, the images will have less variation. After we've chosen the bracketing increment, we'll need to choose the number of shots. To do this, press and hold the bracketing button while rotating the main command dial. You can choose to have 0, 3, minus 2, or plus 2 frames. If you choose to have 3 frames, one will be standard exposure, one will be underexposed, and one will be overexposed. The other frame options for bracketing are plus and minus 2. If minus 2 is selected, two shots will be bracketed, with one being the standard exposure and the other will be underexposed. If plus two is selected, again, two shots will be taken, but this time one will be standard and the other will be overexposed. Now, all we need to do is take a few pictures. As always, we'll press the shutter button halfway to focus and the rest of the way to take the picture. Since we're in a continuous release mode, we'll hold the shutter button down to record bracketed images. Now that we've experimented with exposure bracketing, let's look at the flash level bracketing feature. Although using flash bracketing is very similar to exposure bracketing, there are a few settings that we'll need to change. First, since we're using the flash, we'll need to change the release mode from continuous to single frame. Next, we'll need to change the bracketing set from auto exposure only to flash only. Again, this is in the menu system under the custom settings menu, bracketing and flash, and auto bracketing set. This time, we'll choose flash only. Note that if you choose AE and flash, you can bracket the exposure level combined with the flash level. The next thing we'll need to do is verify that the flash is set to the TTL control. This setting is also located in the custom settings menu under bracketing and flash. Select flash control for built-in flash and choose TTL. With the TTL flash control, the flash output is automatically adjusted. The other three flash options, manual, repeating, and commander mode, will not produce accurate results when bracketing. Now, all that we need to do is set the number of frames to be bracketed as well as the increment we'd like. Again, we'll just press and hold the bracketing button while rotating the main and sub-command dials. Rotating the main command dial selects the number of frames, and the sub-command dial selects the increment. Finally, we'll take some pictures. As always, we'll press the shutter button halfway to focus and the rest of the way to take the picture. In the single release mode, we'll need to press the shutter button three times to take three separate bracketed shots. Just like we can bracket the exposure and flash, we can also bracket the white balance. Doing this will allow greater control over the color of images particularly in tricky lighting situations. To set the bracketing set to the white balance, we'll return to the custom settings menu, bracketing and flash, auto bracketing set, and we'll select white balance bracketing. 
We'll have the best results if an appropriate white balance setting has been selected or if a custom white balance has been taken. When white balance is bracketed, only one picture needs to be taken and the camera will automatically generate the bracketed copies of the image. For white balance, there are several options for the number of frames to be bracketed. The first option is three frames. With this option, the first frame is the standard white balance, the second frame will have an increased amber look, and the last frame will have increased blue tones. The next option is A2 frames. With this option, the camera will record two images. The first will have the standard white balance setting, the second will have increased amber tones. The last option for frames in white balance bracketing is blue two frames. Again, the camera will record two frames, with the first being the standard white balance, but the second image will have increased blue tones. You can also set the increment for white balance bracketing by pressing and holding the bracketing button while rotating the subcommand dial. An increment of one will provide the least amount of variation, and three will provide the most amount of variation. In addition to bracketing exposure, flash, and white balance, the Nikon D610 also allows you to bracket the active delighting. Active delighting is a feature on many newer Nikon digital SLRs that improves the detail in shadow and highlight areas of your image. It's particularly useful in scenarios where important parts of the subject are shadowed, people outdoors in full sun, for example. It's important to note, however, that if active delighting setting is too high, more noise will be visible in the shadow areas of the image. To set the bracketing set to active delighting, we'll return to the custom settings menu, bracketing and flash, auto bracket set, and we'll select ADL or active delighting bracketing. The other thing that we need to look at in the menu system is the active delighting setting. That setting is located in the shooting menu we'll select Active Delighting and Normal. We can choose to have up to three frames bracketed by pressing and holding the bracketing button while rotating the main command dial. If you choose two frames, the first shot will be taken with Active Delighting off, and the second shot will have the selected Active Delighting setting. If you choose three frames, the first shot will have Active Delighting set to off, the second shot will be set to normal, and the third shot will be set to high. The D610 has a feature for creating multiple exposures as well as a feature for interval timer photography. These features are great for creative and artistic shots as well as for when you'd like to document a specific series of events. First, we'll discuss the multiple exposure function on your camera. In film and digital photography alike, a multiple exposure is created when the film or image sensor is exposed two or more times to two or more different images. The final image has the additional image or images superimposed over the first. This photography technique is useful for creating artistic effect and is most commonly used when photographing fireworks, lightning, or superimposing a bright moon in a daytime scene. Let's walk through how to set up your D610 to shoot a multiple exposure image. Note that this function is only available in the P, S, A, and M modes. First, you'll want to enter the shooting menu and select multiple exposure. Here, you can make adjustments to each of the three menu items. Let's first discuss the multiple exposure mode setting. You can choose from off, on single photo, and on series. If you'd like to record just one multiple exposure image, you'll want to select on single photo. If you select on series, you can take consecutive multiple exposure images until you return to the multiple exposure mode menu and select off. For our purposes today, we'll select on single photo. Now let's look at the number of shots option. You can choose to have two or three images superimposed. The bottom menu item is the auto gain option. The gain determines how much adjustment to exposure the camera makes for each exposure. If you want to have the exact same exposure value for each shot, auto gain should be set to on. When the auto gain is set to on, the camera will use the exact same exposure value and automatically divide that exposure based on the number of shots. 
For instance, if the number of shots is set to three, the exposure adjustment would be one-third. Likewise, if the number of shots is two, the exposure adjustment would be one-half. This way, when the exposures are combined into one image, the total exposure would be the equivalent of one proper exposure. There are times when you'll want to set the auto gain to off if you're photographing subjects with a dark background, or if you want to manually control the exposure for each shot. The off setting would work well. The other time that you would want the auto gain set to off is if you were using a technique called masking, where part of the lens is covered for the first shot and the opposite part of the lens is covered for the second shot. For these types of multiple exposure images, you would want each shot to have a full proper exposure. Another feature of the D610 is the interval timer. With this feature, you can set the camera to take photos at preset time intervals, which can be minutes or hours. Photographers use this feature for documentary, scientific work, as well as artistic and creative purposes. The interval timer could be used for photographing anything from runners in a race to dramatic sunrise sunsets to creative self-portraits in the studio. You'll probably get the best results using this function if the camera is on a tripod. To use this function on your camera, first make sure that you're not using the self-timer or remote release modes and that the date and time have been accurately set on your camera. Then enter the shooting menu and select interval timer shooting. You can choose to have the camera start shooting now or at a specific time. If now is chosen, the first shot will be taken about three seconds after the settings are completed. If you'd like shooting to begin at a specific time, highlight start time and use the multi-selector to select the hour and minute that you'd like shooting to begin. Note that the time of the interval timer uses 24 hour notation. The next step in setting up the interval timer for shooting is choosing the interval or the amount of time that you'd like to have pass between shots. Press the right arrow on the multi-selector to set the interval. Now you can set the hours, minutes, and seconds. If you're anticipating slow shutter speeds, you'll want to make sure that you choose an interval or time that is longer than the slowest shutter speed that you expect the camera to use. When you're finished, press the right arrow on the multi-selector to continue. Now you'll need to choose the number of intervals as well as the number of shots you'd like the camera to take at each interval. Again, simply use the multi-selector to make your selections. The options on the left side of the screen is the number of intervals or how many times you'd like the camera to take pictures. Once that has been set, you can choose the number of shots you'd like the camera to take at each interval. When you've entered values for both of these settings, press the right arrow button on the multi-selector to continue. Now you're ready to have the camera start taking pictures. Highlight on and press OK. If you'd like to simply save the settings and go back later to turn the shooting on, highlight off and press OK. Note that while interval timer photography is in progress, you can freely play back and adjust menu settings. But the settings within the interval timer function cannot be changed while interval timer photography is in progress. Let's say you'd like to pause the interval timer shooting. There are three ways that you can do this. First, you can enter the interval timer menu and press start and pause, then OK. You can press the OK button in between intervals. You can turn the camera off and then on again. You would use this method if you needed to change the memory card. Or you can change the release mode to self timer or mirror up. When you'd like shooting to resume, simply choose a new starting time as we did earlier. Enter the shooting menu and select interval timer shooting, then either choose now or set the starting time. Select restart and press OK. In addition to capturing impressive high-resolution still images, the Nikon D610 can record full HD movies. Note that because the basic features of the camera's movie mode were covered in detail in QuickPro's original guide for the D610, we'll primarily be looking at the more in-depth features and functions of the movie mode. Let's first take a look at the options for customizing many of the camera's movie mode functions.
The customizable features are found in the custom setting menu, menu G, movie. The first option is assign function button. Just as with still shooting, you can set the function button to serve a specific role in movie mode. The first option, index marking. With this option, you can press the function button to add an index marking at the current position. This can be especially helpful when you're playing back or editing your movie files. The next option is View Photo Shooting Info, which will display the shutter speed, aperture, and other settings when the function button is pressed. To return to the standard movie recording display, press the function button a second time. The next option is AEAF Lock, which will allow you to press and hold the function button to lock the focus and exposure. Next, there is AE Lock Only, which will allow you to lock only the exposure setting while the function button is pressed. Next, there is AE Lock Hold. With AE Lock Hold, you can press the function button once to lock the exposure, and then press it a second time to release the exposure lock. Next, there is AF Lock Only, which will allow you to lock the focus while the function button is pressed. The last option for customizing the function button is AF On. When AF On is selected, you can press and hold the function button to use the camera's autofocus in the same way as pressing the shutter button halfway. You can also select None, which will disable the function button during movie mode. The next button that you can customize for the camera's movie mode is the Preview button. The options for customizing the Preview button include Index Marking, View Photo Shooting Info, AE AF Lock, AE Lock Only, AE Lock Hold, AF Lock Only, AF On, and None. Each of these settings function the same way that they do for the Function button. The next button that can be customized for movie shooting is the AEL-AFL button. The options for customizing the AEL-AFL button include Index Marking, View Photo Shooting Info, AEAF Lock, AE Lock Only, AE Lock Hold, AF Lock Only, AF On, and None. Each of these settings function the same way that they do for the Function button. The final button that can be customized for use in the camera's movie mode is the shutter button. For this button, you can select one of two different options. First, you can select Take Photos. When this option is selected, pressing the shutter button completely during movie recording will end the movie recording and take a 16 by 9 aspect ratio still photo. The other option, Record Movies, will allow you to press the shutter button halfway to enter the live view in movie mode. Then, you can press the shutter button completely to start or end movie recording. With Nikon's wide array of lenses, flash units, and other accessories like multi-power battery packs and GPS accessories, you'll be able to take amazing photos and further build your photography skills. Please note that using some third-party accessories, particularly flash units and multi-power packs, may cause damage to your camera and will void your Nikon warranty. You'll want to check with your authorized Nikon dealer or service representatives for more information about the use of third-party accessories. Nikon has produced many lenses and types of lenses since they began producing film SLR cameras. Since 1959, Nikon lenses have been produced using the F-mount, meaning that they will fit any Nikon body with the same style mount. However, there are a few things to know that are important to remember if you're considering using older style lenses on your Nikon D610. First, lenses that were produced prior to 1979, pre-AI lenses, will cause serious damage to your camera's mirror so do not try to attach one of those to your D610 body. If you have questions about a lens, refer to your camera's owner's manual for a complete list of incompatible lenses and accessories. Most lenses produced after 1979, or AI lenses, can be safely attached to your camera body, but these lenses are lenses that are non-CPU, 
meaning that they will not automatically have the ability to meter or communicate with the camera. They are also manual focus lenses. One of the benefits of the D610 camera is that you can input lens data for these lenses through the camera's menu system. Doing this will enable many of the features that are available on CPU lenses, most importantly including the matrix metering option. Lenses that were produced after 1986 are considered to be CPU lenses and are generally fully compatible with the D610 camera body. Most of them will autofocus and are capable of sharing important data with the camera body. A CPU lens can communicate with the camera body via these CPU contacts. The lenses produced by Nikon today are CPU lenses and are identified as either type G or type D lenses. The G or D is shown on the lens barrel. The main difference between these two types of lenses is that the D lenses include an aperture ring, like this, while the G lenses do not. Now that we've discussed a little about lens compatibility, let's discuss choosing a lens. With a wide variety of lenses in Nikon's current lineup, it can seem overwhelming to know what lens or lenses will help you with the type of photography you're doing. One of the things you'll need to consider when you're shopping for a Nikon lens for your D610 is whether the lens is FX or DX. FX lenses will allow you to use the entire area of the image sensor. DX lenses are fully compatible with the D610, but they will only allow the camera to use a smaller area of the image sensor. Nikon DX lenses have a DX on the lens barrel. Let's talk a little about lenses and apertures. When shopping for a lens, you'll notice that all lenses have a maximum aperture or f-stop. Smaller numbers like f1.4 or f2.8 are considered to be faster lenses because they allow a lot of light into your camera. If your lens has a range of apertures, note that the largest aperture can only be used at the widest focal length. This is how the aperture or aperture range is indicated on a lens barrel. The maximum aperture of the lens is important to keep in mind when you're shopping for a lens, especially if you're planning on doing photography in low light conditions, action or sports photography, or if you're looking to create photos with a very shallow depth of field. After the maximum aperture of the lens, the next thing that you'll need to consider is the focal length. Nikon lenses are available in a wide range of focal lengths, each with its own benefits and uses. The focal length on a lens is the first series of numbers on a lens barrel and is measured in millimeters. This lens, for instance, is a 24 to 120 millimeter lens, or the focal lengths range from 24 millimeters to 120 millimeters. Lenses that have a range of focal lengths, like this 24 to 120, are zoom lenses. Zoom lenses have the ability to get closer or farther away from the subject without ever actually moving the camera. Lenses that have only one focal length, like this 50mm 1.8 lens, are prime lenses. Prime lenses do not have zooming capability, but many professional photographers prefer them, particularly for portraits, because of the great clarity they offer. With this understanding of focal lengths in millimeters, we can discuss some of the different ranges of focal lengths as well as the lens categories that different focal lengths fall into. Lenses that are less than 50 millimeters are considered to be wide angle lenses. So the 24 to 120 that we just talked about could fall into the wide angle range because it goes down to 24 millimeters. Wide angle lenses are great for landscape shots as well as situations where space is limited and you want to include as much of the scene as possible. Mid-range lenses have between 50 and 85 millimeters. This range of focal lengths is great for family snapshots, portraits, and vacations. The 24 to 120 lens also falls into the mid-range category. These lenses often are referred to as walk-around lenses because they're so versatile and can be used for a variety of subjects and shooting scenarios. Telephoto lenses are lenses with over 85 millimeters and are great for getting close to your subject. Sports and wildlife photographers use telephoto lenses extensively to zoom in on the subject. Telephoto lenses are also great for getting amazing close-up shots of flowers or other small objects. 
If you're photographing very small objects and you want to have the ability to capture even the smallest details, you'll want to look into a dedicated close-up or micro lens. The focal lengths for dedicated close-up lenses range between about 60 millimeters and 200 millimeters. In addition to apertures and focal lengths, there is one more important feature that you should consider when you're shopping for a Nikon lens. Vibration reduction, or VR. Vibration reduction will help you get sharp photos at slower shutter speeds. This feature is especially useful in low light conditions and can make the difference between a photo like this and a photo like this. Your D610 has many fully customizable settings and options. As we've discussed in chapters 1 and 4, you can customize the camera's buttons and dials, but you can also customize a wide variety of other camera functions to fit your personal preference. Let's take a look at some of the custom setting menus now. The first custom setting menu is menu A, Auto Focus. The first two items in this menu are AFC and AFS priority selection. When you're shooting in the camera's AFC or AFS focus modes, you can choose what priority you would like to be given to the focus of the image. For AFC or continuous servo AF, you can choose from release or focus. If release is selected, the camera will allow the picture to be taken regardless of whether focus has been achieved. If you choose focus, the camera will not allow the picture to be taken if it is not in focus. For the AFS or single servo AF mode, you can also choose from either release or focus. The next menu item in the autofocus custom menu is focus tracking with lock on. With this menu item, you can select how long the camera will wait to adjust the focus when the subject abruptly moves. This option prevents the camera from auto-focusing on other objects passing through the frame when the camera is using focus tracking. You can select options from one short to five long. You can also select off, which will immediately adjust the camera's focus when the focusing distance changes. Next, there is AF point illumination with options for auto, on, and off. If auto is selected, the active focus points in the viewfinder will be illuminated only when the subject is very dark. When on is selected, the active AF points will always be illuminated, and when off is selected, the active AF points won't be illuminated at all. Next, there is focus point wraparound. With this option, you can choose whether or not you'd like to be able to have the focus point selection wrap around from one side of the viewfinder to the other. If wrap is selected, you'll be able to continue scrolling when you reach an edge of the screen, and the focus point will activate at the opposite side, top, or bottom. If no wrap is selected, scrolling will be disabled when you reach the edge of the frame. The next option is number of focus points, which allows you to choose whether you'd like to use all 39 or just 11 AF points. Next, there is built-in AF assist illuminator. If on is selected, the AF illuminator will light under poor lighting conditions to help the camera find focus. Note that you must use the AFS focus mode in conjunction with the auto area AF mode to make sure that the center focus point is selected for the AF illuminator to work properly. If off is selected, the AF illuminator will not light. Now let's look at the options in the next custom setting menu, B, metering and exposure. The first menu item is ISO sensitivity step value. This is where you can select the increment that is used when selecting the ISO. You can choose from one third step and one half step. If you choose one third step, you'll have more ISO settings to choose from than you would for the half step option. The next option, EV steps for exposure control, which allows you to choose one-third or one-half step for the aperture, shutter speed, and auto bracketing exposure values. Again, choosing one-third step will provide more exposure values to choose from than one-half step. The next menu item is Easy Exposure Compensation. 
With this option, you can choose whether you'd like to be able to adjust exposure compensation using only the command dials or with the command dials in conjunction with the exposure compensation button. If On Auto Reset is selected, you'll be able to adjust the exposure compensation using the command dials without the exposure compensation button. With this option, the exposure value will be reset when the camera or exposure meters turn off. The On setting is the same as On Auto Reset, except that the exposure compensation will not be reset when the camera or exposure meters turn off. If off is selected, the exposure compensation can be set only with the use of the exposure compensation button in conjunction with the main command dial. The next item in the metering exposure custom setting menu is center weighted area. With this option, you can choose the diameter of the metering circle that is used when the camera uses center weighted metering. You can choose from 8 millimeters, 12 millimeters, 15 millimeters, 20 millimeters, or average. If average is selected, the entire frame will be average to calculate the exposure. The next menu item is fine tune optimal exposure. With this option, you can fine tune the level of exposure compensation you'd like to be automatically applied to your images for each of the metering modes. Note that for most scenarios, using standard exposure compensation methods is preferred and the fine tune optimal exposure option should only be used in special scenarios. The next custom setting menu is C, Timers and AE Lock. The first item is Shutter Release Button, AEL. With this option, you can choose whether or not you'd like to lock the exposure when the shutter button is pressed halfway. If On is selected, the exposure will be locked when the shutter button is pressed halfway. The next menu item is Standby Timer. This is where you can set how long you'd like the camera's exposure meters to remain active when the camera is not in use. You can choose from settings ranging from 4 seconds to 30 minutes, or you can select no limit. Next, there is the self-timer setting. With this option, you can make adjustments to all of the self-timer settings, including the delay or how long the camera waits to take the picture after the shutter button is pressed, the number of shots, you can choose to have the camera take between 1 and 9 shots, and the interval where you can choose how long the camera should wait in between shots. The next item is Monitor Off Delay, where you can choose how long you'd like the monitor to stay on when the camera is not in use. You can set a specific length of time for playback, menus, information display, image review, and live view. The final menu item in the Timers AE Lock custom setting menu is Remote On Duration. When an optional remote is used, you can use this option to select the length of time to have the camera wait for communication with the remote control before canceling remote control mode. The next custom setting menu is D, Shooting and Display. The first menu item is Beep, which allows you to select the volume and the pitch for the beep sound when the camera auto-focuses or uses the self-timer. Next, there is the Viewfinder Grid Display option, which will allow you to turn a framing grid on in the viewfinder, either on or off. The next menu item is ISO Display and Adjustment, with three options, Show ISO Sensitivity, Show ISO Easy ISO, and Show Frame Count. If Show ISO Sensitivity or Show ISO Easy ISO is selected, the number of shots remaining on the control panel will be replaced with the current ISO setting. With the Show ISO Easy ISO, you can change the ISO setting by rotating one of the command dials, depending on the shooting mode. If Show Frame Count is selected, the camera will simply display the number of shots remaining at its default location on the control panel. Next, there is the Screen Tips option, which can be set to on or off. When enabled, the Screen Tips can provide helpful information for items that are selected in the information display. Next, there is the CL Mode Shooting Speed. This is where you can select the number of frames per second that you'd like the camera to record in the continuous low-speed shooting mode. You can choose from between 1 and 5 frames per second. Next, there is Maximum Continuous Release. In the continuous shooting release modes, 
the camera will continue taking pictures the entire time that the shutter button is held down completely. With this option, you can set the maximum number of shots that you'd like the camera to be able to take in a single burst. You can choose any number between 1 and 100. Next, there is the file number sequence option, which allows you to choose the way that the camera assigns the numbered file names to the images. If on is selected, the camera will consecutively number image files regardless of whether a memory card is formatted or a new memory card is inserted. If off is selected, file numbering will begin at 0001 when a new memory card or folder is used or when a memory card is reformatted. The reset option will reset the file numbering for the on option. Next, there is information display. With this menu item, you can make adjustments to the appearance of the information display. You can choose Auto or you can choose Manual. In Manual, you can choose B, Dark on Light for black lettering, or W, White on Dark for white lettering. The next item is LCD illumination. If On is selected, the control panel will be illuminated whenever the camera's exposure meters are active. If off is selected, the control panel will be illuminated only when the power switch is rotated to the light bulb icon. The next menu item is exposure delay mode. There may be times when you're taking pictures with slow enough shutter speeds that pressing the shutter button to take the picture would result in a blurry image. With exposure delay mode, you can set the camera to have a brief delay after the shutter button is pressed before the picture is actually taken you can choose from one, two, or three seconds for the delay. Next, there is flash warning. When enabled, flash warning will display a flash ready indicator in the viewfinder when the lighting conditions are poor and the flash is needed to ensure a good exposure. Next, there is MBD14 battery type. With this menu item, you can select the type of batteries that you are using with the optional battery pack. This will ensure that the camera functions as it is intended. The last menu item in shooting display is battery order. With this option, you can tell the camera which battery or batteries you'd like to use first when you're using an optional battery pack. The next custom setting menu is E, bracketing and flash. The first menu item is flash sync speed where you can choose the maximum shutter speed that can be used with the built-in or an external flash unit. For the built-in flash, you can choose 1 200th of a second down to 1 60th of a second. If you're using a compatible Nikon external flash unit, you can set the shutter speed to as fast as 1 250th of a second using the Auto FP option. The next option is flash shutter speed where you can select the slowest shutter speed that can be used with the flash in the programmed auto or aperture priority shooting modes. Next, there is flash control for built-in flash. This option will allow you to choose from several different modes for the built-in flash, including the sophisticated TTL mode, where the flash output is adjusted automatically depending on the lighting conditions. Manual, where you can manually set the flash power output, Repeating, where the flash will fire repeatedly while the shutter is open, creating a strobe-like effect. You can use this mode to take creative images that have a multiple exposure feel. The last option is Commander Mode, which allows you to use the built-in flash as a master flash to wirelessly control one or more external Nikon speed lights. Next, there is exposure compensation for flash with two options. First, there is the entire frame. When entire frame is selected, both the flash level and exposure compensation will be adjusted. The other option is background only. When background only is selected, the exposure compensation will be applied only to the background in the image. The next menu item is modeling flash. When enabled, this option will allow you to press and hold the preview button when a flash is being used to see the effects of the lighting on a subject. The flash will fire continuously while the preview button is held down. The next menu item is Auto Bracketing Set. This item is discussed in detail in Chapter 2 of this guide. The last menu item in Bracketing and Flash Custom Setting menu is Bracketing Order. With this option, you can choose the order in which you'd like the camera to record bracketed shots. 
The first option, meter under over, will record the first shot at the standard exposure, the second shot will be underexposed, and the last shot will be overexposed. The other option will begin with the underexposed shot, then the standard exposure, and then finally the overexposed shot. There are two other custom setting menus, F Controls and G Movie. The Controls menu items are discussed in detail in Chapter 1 of this guide, and the Movie menu items are discussed in detail in Chapter 4. Your Nikon D610 is a sophisticated camera that will need some basic care and maintenance to keep it in good working condition. Here are some tips for storing your camera. First, when the camera will be stored for long periods of time, keep the monitor cover in place. Also, remove the battery and use the battery cover. Next, make sure that the storage location is cool and dry and doesn't get exposed to temperatures above 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Avoid storing the camera in areas with high humidity, near televisions, radios, or other equipment that produces strong electromagnetic fields. When you're using the camera regularly, you'll want to protect it from several environmental elements that could cause some damage. The camera should stay dry, and contact with dust and sand should be avoided. You'll also want to avoid subjecting the camera to sudden changes in temperature. If the camera is cold and is suddenly brought into a warm environment, condensation or moisture can build up on the camera's internal components. Also, leaving the lens pointed at the sun will cause damage to the camera's image sensor. Finally, make sure that the camera is turned off before you remove the battery, memory card, change lenses, or attach any accessory to the accessory shoe. You'll want to consult your owner's manual for a complete list of care techniques and cautions. Let's talk a little now about ways to properly clean your camera without causing damage. To remove dust or lint from the camera body, a blower or a brush is a good tool to have on hand. With either of these tools, you can also clean the lens, viewfinder, and mirror. To further clean the camera body, you can use a soft, dry cloth. Do not use alcohol or any other harsh chemicals. If the camera has been used at a beach, you can dampen a cloth with distilled water to clean the camera body. After the blower tool has been used to remove any dust and lint, you can use a soft cloth with a small amount of lens cleaner to gently clean the lens, monitor, and viewfinder. When you're using lens cleaner fluid, be sure to apply the fluid to the cloth and not the camera or lens directly. Your D610 can be set to automatically clean the image sensor each time the camera is turned on or off. To do this, enter the camera's setup menu and select Clean Image Sensor. You can choose either Clean Now or Clean at Startup Shutdown. If you select Clean at Startup Shutdown, you'll need to also choose which option you'd like. You can choose Startup, Shutdown, or both. You can also choose to have the image sensor cleaning set to Off. You can also clean the image sensor manually. Step-by-step -step instructions are available in your camera's owner's manual. When cleaning the image sensor, great care should be taken, as damage to the image sensor or low-pass filter can easily occur. QuickPro suggests that you contact a Nikon authorized service representative for assistance in cleaning the image sensor or other internal camera components. Nikon suggests that your camera be inspected every one to two years by the original retailer or an authorized Nikon service representative. Additionally, the camera should be serviced every three to five years by an authorized Nikon service personnel. We hope you've enjoyed learning more about your Nikon D610. We know this new information will give you enough confidence and know-how to take your photography skills to new levels. Remember, you can refer back to any section of this guide at any time. Watch for more QuickPro guides on using newly released cameras. Thanks for watching.